Lapai, Lapay, Lepai, whatever you call it. These little amps hit the market about six years ago, and this LP2020A Plus has been very popular over the years. I tested one myself about six years ago and was pretty impressed with it. Today we're going to look at the newest addition to the Lapai family, the LP1601S, called a 200 watt amplifier. Got this directly from Parts Express. See a link in the video description below to pick one of these up. You can see that their average price is about $98 when they're not on sale. So not too bad, but quite a bit more than the LP2020. And they're a Class D amplifier rated at 200 watts, but if you look at the manual, it says 160 by two at 10% THD. Also, it requires 24 to 36 volts and has Bluetooth up to 30 meters, so very nice. Let's open it up and check it out. So here's the amp in the box that comes in. It's a nice, large size box. Has the manual right at the top. Some padding to keep everything nice and safe. We have a 32 volt, three amp power supply that's included, also the Bluetooth antenna. And here is the unit itself. Very nice built, very nice looking amplifier. You can see the different connections here, different switches. We'll go over those on the far left. You have the power switch. Then we have the input selection between Bluetooth and RCA. We have a headphone jack for private listening and a really nice big volume potentiometer. Speaking of the volume potentiometer, I'll let you guys listen to it. It makes a little clicky sound. Again, the outside of the amplifier is made of aluminum. It's very thick. It's actually, it actually feels just nice and solid in your hands. Here on the back side, you can see the different connections. We have RCA inputs. We have a Bluetooth antenna. The speaker connections, which are on binding posts. We'll get to those later. And then the barrel connector there for the power input. It says 24 to 32 volts. Speakers are connected to the amplifier via these binding posts on the back which are screw down. Uh, they have little slots for speakers, but most people use banana plugs. You can see I've got the dual banana plugs here, which do not work with this amplifier. It's, it's a small amp, so I mean, that's not a big deal. Just so you know, you're gonna have to get the individual size and I'll show some here, the smaller ones. They make a nice firm sound when you plug them in. Just make sure your speaker wires don't short each other. All right, here we show the Bluetooth antenna that it gives you additional range for the Bluetooth. We'll get that plugged in and then we will go ahead and hook the amp up and let you guys watch and I'll just play some music so you can enjoy it. All right, so switching the select to the up position gives you access to the Bluetooth. So what I'm gonna do here is show you a couple of different ways that I paired it. First up with iOS with an iPhone, show you how simple this is. Just go to your Bluetooth menu, touch the LP1601S. Android pairing, because I have an Android phone too, just to show you guys. Go to your Bluetooth settings, Scroll down, look for the LP1601S, touch it, and a few seconds later, you're connected. Can't be much easier than that, my friends. Both sound quality and range were great with Bluetooth, but I did notice a strange issue. Here, check it out. I was trying to pause it. Okay, just a very small click there when we pause it. All right, since we're blessed enough to have one of these amplifier dynos here in our labs, we're gonna give a test for you guys on this amp. First up, we're gonna do the test with the included power supply, which is 32 volts and three amps. 
We'll do the eight ohm test first, up to 1% THD at one kilohertz. And here you go, 57, 56 watts per channel. And we'll try four ohms, 1% THD, one kilohertz. We got 75 and 76 watts, so right at 75 watts per channel of this amp. So not quite what it's rated to do, but we didn't expect it to do that much. Now notice the 12.24 volts there. That's just powering the dyno. The amp itself is using a power supply which has more voltage. Our next test here is gonna be four ohms up to clipping at one kilohertz. And you can see right about the same that we got at the other one, 75, 77 watts. But there was something interesting going on. I'll let you hear it. All right, I have both cameras recording. I wanna show what happens to the amp when we test it here uh, at four ohms. And you're gonna see it shut off there with the second camera. So let's try it out. All right, you saw it shut off and it comes right back on. It's like it flips some kind of protection relay. You can see we can't really get much over 75 watts per channel without it flipping off. Again, I think it may be the uh, power supply, but we will find out. All right, now I'll hook up an external power source and we'll see how it performs. All right, so we have the two 12 volt, 12 amp per hours batteries wired in series, giving us 24 or actually about 26 volts. Then we have a 1200 watt voltage booster also, boosting the voltage up to around 33 volts. Now you might notice here on the dyno it says 12.26 volts. Again, the dyno has its own 12 volt power supply, so don't let that number confuse you here when we show the test. So again, we'll do four ohms up to 1% THD at one kilohertz using the batteries and the voltage booster. And you can see, yes, we did get more power. <laughs> Almost 100 watts per channel, 96 watts per channel at four ohms up to 1% THD. So quite a bit more, it was like 25 more watts than the old test. And again, 33.3 volts, but this amp says it can accept up to 36 volts. So what do you say? If we can get over 100 watts, we use 36, let's try it out. All right, so due to a discrepancy in the manual, the manual says the amp accepts up to 36 volts. The back of the amp says 32 volts. So we didn't want to go too high. We adjusted it up to 35.4 volts using our two batteries and our voltage booster. So we wanna try this way and see if we can get over 100 watts per channel. What you think? Can it do it? We're gonna find out right here. Again, we're running four ohms, one kilohertz, 1% 1 THD. Kick it, big D, with the Lapai 1601S. Oh yes, over 100 watts, 109, 108. As long as you feed it enough power in, it can do the wattage. That's what I'm talking about, 35.4 volts input. Gives you over 200 watts output. All right, here we'll show you the results of the Lapai LP1601S on our SMD DeMore Engineering Amp Dyno. Using the included power supply, we got 57 plus 56 watts at eight ohms, 75 plus 76 watts at four ohms. Using the external power supply at 33 volts, we got 96 watts per channel. And at 35 volts, we got 109 plus 108 watts. So pretty good. I know most of you guys out there are like me and want to see what makes these things tick. So let's take apart a few screws here. Let's open up this amp and see what's inside. Here we see the guts of the LP1601S. First thing you'll notice is the big heat sink right across the middle that's obviously covering up some sort of a chip, class D chip. And then you can see the connectors here. Everything looks very well built. You can see where the Bluetooth module is here at the bottom and it has the wire that goes to the little antenna. And uh, the range is pretty good. We didn't test exactly what the range was, but uh, yeah. So the amp was nice. We wanted to get a little bit deeper into it though. So let's take it apart a little bit more. All 
right here on the bottom of the amp, you can see NFJ and FX Audio FX1602S back in 2016. So we wanted to take off the heat sink here and check out the chip. So let's do that. There's only two screws here on the bottom and we'll be able to take the heat sink off. We can check out that Class D chip. So here it is. I was absolutely amazed to see how small this little Class D chip was. Give you a better shot here. You can see it compared to the board and the other internal components look really nice. This amplifier was um, pretty well built, well constructed for a hundred bucks. I think pretty good deal. I did buy this myself. It was not sent to me by Parts Express. Appreciate you guys always for watching. Until next time, BD Wiz, I'm out of here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try and see if we can get an idea of what the current pull is for this little Lapai, because I know somebody's going to ask. And we're going to try it at 4 ohms, certified 1 kilohertz. And again, we've got about 35.4 volts going to the amplifier. So we're going to see how much amperage is drawn, because the power supply that comes with it is a 3 amp power supply. And we've already proven that you really need more than that to get the most power out of this. So let's see if we can get an idea of what it pulls. I'm not 100% sure that this is going to be really, really accurate, but it should give us an idea. So anyway, let's try it out and see. Here we go. Starting the test. I'll tell you when we get to 1% THD. Now, okay, 